Hello and welcome back to Tricore Gaming with me, Fletcher. And in today's video, I thought I'd give my thoughts on the second episode of uh, Stephen Fry's dinosaur documentary on Channel 5 of British TV. If you haven't already seen my thoughts on episode one, do go and watch that video before this one, as some of the points in this video are basically exactly the same as the first video. Again, this video is entirely unscripted for two reasons. One, I want to get angry because there's quite a lot of this episode that makes me angry, and two, I'm not going to put more effort into my review of this episode than the people who made this show did. Let's get straight into it uh, with the CGI. Again, the CGI in this episode is piss poor and in fact it is worse in some regards than episode one. They clearly haven't learned anything. There are examples of some really questionable CGI choices such as grass being depicted when we know grass didn't exist at this time. There's also laziness being demonstrated instead of having one model for the Velociraptor and one model for the Uteraptor, because this episode is basically looking at raptors, um, instead of having a separate model for both of those animals, they use the same model and just scale them differently, which is the laziest thing I have seen in a very long time. Then there's, there's this also really wonderful scene later on in the episode where this pack of Uteraptors kill the Iguano Colossus, which also takes, um, which is also part of this episode and not only do they manage to kill it without shedding any blood or marking the Iguano Colossus whatsoever, the animals when they're eating the Iguano Colossus, their heads actually phase through the model of the other dinosaur, which again is just a really lazy example of CGI use there. The Uteraptor model as well, they, they claim quite correctly that the raptors all had very stiff tails to balance out their weight, allowing them to run quickly, but the actual tail of the Uteraptor in this episode keeps curling around like a wet noodle, kind of completely negating what they're claiming about the, its design. And actually when the Uteraptor runs, it is the funniest thing I've seen in ages. It runs so derpily and it drags its tail along the ground like it's in some 1960s black and white dinosaur film. It's shockingly bad. They've also given the Uteraptor the massive jaw gape that the Allosaurus had in the first episode. Don't know where they're getting that from or why they're doing that because Uteraptor certainly couldn't gape its mouth like that. So again, just some really lazy model use, I think. And I want to come back to the CGI and model use and actually the theft of dinosaur models towards the end because um, I really want to to give my opinion on that. But let's move on from the really horrifically terrible CGI to the really fucking bullshit scientific experiment stunt that they pull in the middle of this episode. So again, like episode one, they have the robotic dinosaur come back and they are trying to test two different particular ways that the Uteraptor sickle claw on the foot could have been used. And they want to do two different experiments to test out two different styles of attack. That's fine. They even, in both examples, use a piece of sort of leather, um, textured leather, which they're, they're trying to claim is, is resembling dinosaur skin. It's better than a fucking watermelon, so they get a point for that, a solitary point for that. Unfortunately, that goes out of the window with the quality of the science this stunt then uses. They claim the first experiment is using a super sharp steel claw. Fuck off, is it a super sharp steel claw? claw. The thing is about as blunt as my opinion on the British government. It is not sharp in any way. It's actually got a rounded tip. The claw is also not the correct shape to be raptor claw. It's not sickle shaped at all. All they've done is put an ice cream cone on their rig and then when it attacks the piece of leather, because this is just a piece of thin leather, like a piece of paper, there's no flesh behind it. There's no resistance. There's no flesh or tissue behind this piece of skin, which is what a real dinosaur would have. So so obviously this stupidly blunt fake claw they've put here, it just deforms the lever and slides right off, which I could have told you was going to happen because your claw isn't fucking sharp. And they act completely surprised at this. But what's even worse is that the next experiment, they actually have a correctly shaped and actually sharp sickle claw on this hydraulic rig that they're testing it piercing a piece of leather. And again, 
they act completely surprised when this actual super sharp piece of metal pierces through this piece of very thin leather. And again, obviously it's going to. I can demonstrate something sharp piercing a piece of leather by getting a fucking knife and putting it through a piece of leather because it's fucking sharp. You cannot compare a blunted claw with a rounded tip, which isn't even the correct shape, to an actual correctly shaped and actually fucking sharp claw. All you've done there is manipulate the experiment and manipulate the results in order to achieve what you are attempting to say. Because I bet you if the same claw was used in both experiments, which you should have done if you have an ounce of scientific integrity and actually want to prove something important and actually want to say something half decent, if you use the same claw in both experiments, I bet you you would find that the claw would probably go through the leather perfectly well in both experiments. So they wouldn't be able to say either way which was better than the other. But because they wanted to add some idea that actually one was better than the other, they fake a situation and manipulate the results and manipulate the experiment in order to achieve that. That's not good science, that's just deception. It's fake and fraudulent. And I'm, I'm getting annoyed at that because I am someone who likes science. I am also someone who understands what the fucking scientific method is. It's just stunt, like the Allosaurus attacking the fucking melon was in the last episode. But this is even worse than that because it's not just a stunt, it's deliberately manipulative and deceptive. So f that experiment and f your stunt robot dinosaurs. But let's move away from uh, the frankly ridiculous fake science experiment to the bigger problem with this particular episode. And I'm going to lump it all under one lump group of really bad script writing, manipulation and deceptive science. Let's start by looking at the terrible script writing. There is some real awful elements here. Uh, Stephen Fry claiming that uh, he can see the super sharp teeth on the raptor so he knows it's a carnivore straight away and then when the expert comes on the screen five minutes later Stephen Fry asks the expert oh how do you know it's a meat eater and the expert points out the super sharp teeth and Stephen Fry actually acts surprised what the fuck who did that no one look at this script seriously and then there's a later bit in this particular episode where they they kind of keep mixing up iguano colossus and iguanodontid they keep using the, the different wording interchangeably and that screws up some of the things they're saying. So the Iguano Colossus is identified as Iguano Colossus by the um, expert in the episode. But at a later point, Stephen Fry says about the Iguano Colossus that the Iguanodontids were one of the earliest species of dinosaur discovered. Well, and that's not correct in terms of wording. Iguanodontid is not a species. Iguanodontid is a family of dinosaurs. It's the clade of dinosaurs, which includes species like Iguanodon, like Mantellosaurus, like Iguanocolossus. And Iguanocolossus was not the earliest species of Iguanodontid found. For that, you want to actually look at Iguanodon as being one of the earliest species of Iguanodontid discovered. So again, bad editing and bad script writing there, mixing up the terminology. But then let's move on from just the bad terminology use to the frankly uh, deceptive or incorrect correct science. Yet again we have this animation trying to say that Pangaea was in existence during the Jurassic period. That's completely wrong. It was already breaking up at the end of the Triassic. By the time they're claiming Pangaea was beginning to break up, it had already begun to break up. So again that's just repeating the bad science of episode 1. They simplify the science down to remove the interpretation. Something that you have to learn about paleontology and history in general is that it's all interpretation. There's no fact, there's no 100% truth. All you can do is make the best interpretation based off the evidence. So at no point can you say for certain something about a dinosaur. You always have to really word it to say that some paleontologists believe that. There are some people who think that we think that because of this reason. You can't say this is what it was. However, this episode wants to try to present its information as 
a hundred percent fact and it does this by having the expert on the show not explaining that actually there's more to the interpretation of the evidence we have than what they're presenting the uteraptor they present is completely 100 percent covered in feathers and yes feathers were present on raptors feathers were present on other dinosaurs we know that what we cannot know is the coverage of those feathers whether it was all over feathered or whether the feathers were just on the arms and the tail and the head we don't know that however that's not stated the expert doesn't say this is just one possible uh interpretation he doesn't say this is what we think they might have looked like he doesn't say that you know we we don't know for sure how how ca covered in feathers they were this is just one particular idea that's not what he says he just says well we found dinosaurs with feathers therefore uteraptor was completely covered in feathers that's not true and that's manipulative and what you're doing is by having your expert state that on the show you are passively confirming that single one interpretation as truth as opposed to what it actually is which is just one interpretation and you're not presenting an adequate range of the science or interpretation or theories behind the paleontology here you are simplifying it dumbing it down they do this at a later point where they claim that that a Uteraptor could run at 25 miles an hour. That's again, that's manipulative in statement. Firstly, the 25 mile an hour estimation they claim for Uteraptor, that's actually the estimation for Velociraptor. Estimations for Uteraptor are a little bit lower because it's a bigger animal. Pretty much most of the paleontologists who have looked at this all suggest that they would probably only be able to maintain this speed over a short distance. Again, that fact isn't mentioned and again it's never stated that the speed is an estimation he just says they could run at this speed not it's estimated that they could run at this speed so again you're presenting an estimation an untruth as the truth which is deceptive they depict the iguana colossus using its thumb spike in an attack as a method of defense and again this is simplifying the situation there's actually lots of different theories about what iguanodontids use their thumb spikes for. Not all of them uh, as a weapon of defense against carnivores. There are some people who believe it was just used in mating rituals. There are some who think it's actually a, uh, an adaption to help them eat fruit and seeds and get leaves and plants off of uh, trees and such. There's lots of different possible theories about what it's used for. But this episode just says, oh, well, the thumb spike is a weapon of defense and that's all it was used for, which again is simplifying and dumbing down the science. They claim that Uteraptor is hyper intelligent because it has a large brain for its body size well actually that's not uh, completely accurate the correlation between brain size and intelligence is actually a pretty shaky one there's no you know it's not a definitive truth that a big brain makes you intelligent and it's also very dependent on what you're what, what are you measuring that intelligence of based on the brain you know intelligence is is a lot harder to define than just if you have a big brain you're intelligent but you know instead of saying we think that because it had a large brain for its body size it might have been intelligent which is cor a correct wording they say it has a big brain for its body size therefore it is or was intelligent which you can't possibly know you're not presenting the truth you're presenting a manipulation of the evidence again by far one of the funniest things this program does is it tries to claim that the raptors in Jurassic Park were based off the Uteraptor that's complete lie unfortunately um firstly uteraptor wasn't scientifically described until one month before the film came out so it's unlikely that uteraptor was used as a model for those raptors the movie would have e would have already been in final stages by the time it was scientifically described secondly uteraptor is actually considerably larger than the depiction of the raptors in the movie it's a lot larger than a human being so it's actually it's too big michael crichton confirmed that the dinosaurs are supposed to be dinonychus he stated that they were supposed to be dinonychus and he just called them velociraptor because it sounded better and that fact has been proven in various publications by people who worked on the movie and by michael crichton himself so again 
Stephen Fry claiming that the Uteraptors were the basis of the Jurassic Park Raptors is a complete misinformation towards the audience. This episode is full of deceptive claims and presenting what are interpretations, what are theories, what are possibilities as truth, which I think is very problematic. Now, before I wrap up this particular review of episode two, I want to come back to you something that has been pointed out to me about episode one, and that is that they have stolen models from Ark Survival Evolved for use in the episodes. This, I think, is proof that the people who made this program have not a passion for the subject that they're making a program about. The Ark Survival Evolved dinosaurs, they're not supposed to be paleontologically accurate. I mean, for fuck's sake, the Stegosaurus has six tail spikes on the end of its tail, but it is used in episode one. I didn't notice until I went back and had another look, but they actually use the six spiked version of the Stegosaurus in the episode. And since since doing that review, plenty of other people have shown me the other Ark Survival Evolved models that have been stolen from the game for the use in this episode. And I think it demonstrates that there's absolutely no passion for this at all. The people involved in this project, they don't give a damn about paleontology or dinosaurs. They're just after making a quick, cheap TV show as quickly as they can. I consider myself a tank and titanic and dinosaur semi-expert. They're my specialist subjects. And they're my specialist subjects because I have a passion for them. And part of that that passion is that I read a lot. I read a lot of different books and I've watched a lot of different TV shows and I read a lot of different scientific articles and I basically gather as much information about these subjects as I can. I have, for example, the original transcript of the Titanic's sinking hearing that they did after the disaster. I have the transcript of that. I have the 2012 reopening of that transcript to look at what they got right and what they got wrong and what new modern science can add to that. I have bookcases full of different authors and different books and different papers on the subjects I am passionate about. And that demonstrates someone who's passionate about a subject. They are widely read. They consider lots of different elements for their specialist subject. They certainly wouldn't, for example, if I was making a dinosaur documentary, I certainly wouldn't go and find some cheap assets somewhere and stick them into a cheap CGI background and claim that that is the best that I could do. Someone with passion about a subject wouldn't use a clearly incorrect Ark Survival Evolved game model of a six spiked Stegosaurus and put it in what they're claiming is a factual documentary. You can't do that. If you're going to create a factual documentary, then it has to be the facts. It's got to be as close to the truth as you can do. And stealing assets from Ark Survival Evolved is not as close to the, tr the truth or the close to the facts as you can get. What that is, is you being pricks. You are damaging the science. You are damaging paleontology by doing that because you're not creating an accurate representation. You're creating a manipulative or fraudulent representation. So not only is this Channel 5 documentary presenting the wrong science, not only are they presenting bullshit, they're also basically, in my opinion, damaging paleontology while doing so. Because people are going to watch this and they're going to think that it's true. They're going to think that it's factual. They're going to think that the people who made this actually bothered to take the time to check what they were writing and to check what they were presenting and to check what they were doing. But it doesn't appear that way to me. It appears to me that this is just a group of people that are trying to push something out quickly and cheaply like EA does with their sports games. I absolutely hate that. Um, it's laziness and I can't stand laziness. There are people on YouTube who make clear passion product documentaries. People who clearly have a passion for what they're doing and clearly have a passion for the interests that they have and they actually try to create the best product that they can. 
for free. They don't have TV studios or big narrator names like Stephen Fry. They don't have TV companies behind them to make something. They do it themselves. They put the fucking work in and the end product are documentaries that are far better and far superior and far more clearly made with love and devotion and passion for the subject than what Channel 5 has done here. Having watched episode 2, I've come to a few different conclusions. Firstly, I'm not going to bother watching the rest of the episodes of this show. Uh, I don't want to sit through another waste of time, so I won't be reviewing the rest of the episodes. What I am going to do instead is I'm going to retrospectively review the good dinosaur documentaries. I'm going to retrospectively review the Walking with Dinosaurs documentaries, the Walking with Beasts, the Walking with Monsters, Prehistoric Park as well, because I really love those documentaries, so I'm going to retrospectively review those, and we're going to discuss what I think is good, what I think is dated or bad, my overall opinion of those particular shows. And I would also suggest to anyone thinking about watching any of these documentaries, don't. I would actually suggest that instead of watching the pile of shit that these shows are, I would suggest you go and watch the Beyond the Park episodes that I've made, where I look at the real science behind our favourite prehistoric animals, and actually do try to present the information accurately and fairly in a responsible way. So I'd actually suggest that you folks go and watch those videos and uh, give me some suggestions of future episodes you would like to see of that particular uh, series that I'm doing, um, because I will not be reviewing any more of these episodes. This program is a farce. And um, Stephen Fry and Channel 5, as far as I'm concerned, you both should be exceedingly disappointed with yourselves for pushing out this waste of space and waste of television. But yeah, that's my opinion on episode 2. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about episode 2. Uh, let me know if you folks are going to go watch Beyond the Park. I look forward to seeing your comments on my attempt uh, to, to create some educational videos about dinosaurs. And uh, if you have not already done so, please please do give the video a like and subscribe for more content from all of us at Tribecore Gaming. I am now going to go and try to remove the memory of the, these shitty episodes from my mind by watching Walking with Dinosaurs and I'll see you folks in the next video. Until then, stay safe and goodbye.